Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bitto. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 300 of Mexico Unexplained where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Bitto. March 11, 2020 seemed like an ordinary day to many, but to royal watchers it was extremely significant. Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom became the fourth longest reigning monarch in known human history. On that day, she surpassed a little-known ruler, even to the most astute who follow royalty. Her Majesty took the fourth longest reigning monarch title from Kinich Hanab Pakal, whose name among his people was Sunshield, who ruled the jungle kingdom of Palenque in ancient Mexico for a total of 68 years and 33 days. He came to power when he was only 12, and the monuments of his great city mark his accession day as July 26, 615 A.D. He would die on August 28, 683 A.D., at the age of 80. To understand the world's fifth longest reigning monarch, we must understand the context in which he lived and ruled. Palenque, whose Maya name was Baak Lakamha, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site located in the eastern part of the Mexican state of Chiapas, near the present-day border with Guatemala. The city was part of the Maya civilization, which is not to be confused with the Maya Empire, which did not exist. Maya civilization was a loosely connected group of city-states sharing the same cultural elements, much like the ancient Greeks. So, Palenque was an independent city-kingdom, ruled by a powerful dynasty. To this day, the city is somewhat shrouded in mystery, and only 10% of it has been excavated or thoroughly explored. No one even knows how old Palenque really is. Its first recorded ruler is supposed to have reigned in 2325 BC, but many archaeologists regard this as a mythological king. During its heyday, between about 400 AD and its collapse around 800 AD, Palenque was home to tens of thousands of people at a powerful and wealthy elite class. The city held dominion over an area of about 40 square kilometers, which included rich soils and ample fresh water sources. It controlled minor settlements, many vital resources, and important trade routes extending to other parts of Mesoamerica. People generally associate Palenque with Pakal the Great, who is known not only for his grandiose building projects, but for his mysterious sarcophagus, which some say depicts an ancient astronaut. Please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 6 for more information about the so-called Palenque astronaut. Before leaping to the end of his life in his intricate burial, what was Pakal's life like, and what situation was he born into? Pakal was born in the month of March, in the year 603 AD, which was an uncertain and tumultuous time for the kingdom of Palenque. When Pakal was two years old, Palenque was attacked by the powerful kingdom of Kalakmul. They would attack two more times during Pakal's youth, in 610 and 611, when the future king was just seven and eight years old. For more information about Kalakmul, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 219. The written records thus discovered at the ruined city of Palenque give modern researchers a sketchy history of the early 600s AD. Archaeologists know that there was a new ruler installed at Palenque after the Kalakmul attack of 605, but little is known of him. Also, in the 611 Kalakmul attack, Palenque lost its king. At that time, there may have been a foreign ruler on the throne for a while, or there could have been a power vacuum in the city during which local elites quarreled and jockeyed for position. 
In the year 612 AD, when Pakal was nine years old, his grandfather, named Hanab Pakal, became king of Palenque, but his rule did not even last a year. When he died, his daughter, the mother of the future Pakal the Great, became queen of Palenque. Her name was Sak Kuk, and she would rule for three years until young Pakal turned 12, which was the age of majority in the ancient Maya world. It was not unusual for a Maya kingdom to be ruled by a queen, but it was usually in a regency capacity and only until a male was old enough or prepared well enough to assume the throne. Even after Pakal assumed power, his mother Lady Sak Kuk played a very influential role in Palenque politics. In fact, many researchers believe that she held a high advisory position in the kingdom up until the time of her death in the year 640 when she was in her late 60s. Soon after Pakal became king, he initiated various monumental building projects at Palenque. Much of this was to solidify and further validate his rule early on. In his childhood, Pakal had an up-close and personal view of the chaos of Palenque's politics and saw firsthand how local nobles vied for power during the invasions of neighboring Kalakmul. Like hereditary rulers throughout history, he needed to legitimize his authority somehow and to ensure that his descendants would have the right to rule Palenque in the future. Maya scholar and one-time editor of National Geographic magazine, Gene Stewart, had this to say about the early years of the reign of Pakal the Great. Quote, Pakal emphatically traced his lineage back to a deity, as well as to royal humans, and other rulers also found it wise to establish divine ancestors. A Maya ruler served as the human manifestation of gods on earth, as the intermediary between humans and gods, he claimed the power to control the supernatural forces of the universe. In rituals, he nurtured and glorified the gods, seeking to maintain the always precarious balance of nature in an agricultural society. End quote. Pakal set his history and royal right to rule literally in stone with the construction of the various buildings that still stand in the center of Palenque to this day, some 14 centuries later. Pakal enlarged and remodeled the royal palace and added to it the signature four-story tower which still stands. Researchers are divided on the purpose of this structure. Some say the tower served as an astronomical observatory, while others believe, given Palenque's susceptibility to attack, that the tower was a military watchtower. Fringe researchers believe that the tower was inspired by East Asian pagodas and served a religious function, but that would presuppose Maya contact with Asia. Pakal also constructed in the western zone of the city what modern Mexicans have named the Templo Olvidado, which was considered to be on the cutting edge of Maya architecture at the time and would be duplicated throughout the Maya world. With its multiple doors, large trefoil arches, and double galleried interior, the Olvidado Temple provided a massive well-lit enclosed space. Although Pakal did not construct carved stone slab stelae, as found at many other Maya sites, he did record memorable events of his reign on the walls of his monuments and was a patron of the arts. Some of the finest carving and plaster creations in ancient Mexico still exist in the ruined city of Palenque. Maya scholar Michael D. Coe says this about the artistic talent showcased here. Quote, the Palenque artists excelled in stucco work, and the exteriors of the pilasters ranged along the galleries of the palace are marvelously embellished in that medium with Maya lords in relief, carrying the symbols of their authority while lesser individuals sit cross-legged at their side. Although stuccos were once painted, and the noted Palenque authority, Merle Green Robertson, has found a definite color code. For instance, the exposed skin of humans was painted red, while that of the gods was covered with blue. End quote. 
In Pakal's palace, there is a lengthy text on the wall giving researchers more insight into Palenque's foreign relations during the king's lengthy reign. Although not fully transcribed by archaeologists, that which has been translated tells of Pakal's alliances with the royal families of Tikal and Yashchilan. Together, the inscriptions state, the alliance captured six foreign kings, thus giving Palenque more power and prestige. Undoubtedly, the events from Pakal's childhood made the ruler want to be strong enough to fight off any enemy invasion, and he made solid alliances with other Maya kingdoms like none of his predecessors ever did. The spoils of war and the bounty of friendly trade with his powerful allies enriched Pakal's kingdom and allowed Pakal to continue his building projects and other public works, such as the building of an aqueduct to transport abundant fresh water to the city. As mentioned previously, Palenque also controlled important trade routes in the ancient Maya world, and this control also contributed to the wealth of the city. The people of Palenque saw an epic of peace and prosperity not previously known after the decades of warfare and domestic political instability. At the age of 21 in the year 624, Pakal married a princess named Lady Tsakbu. It is unknown if Lady Tsakbu was a foreigner or if she hailed from the local Palenque nobility. They would have at least three children with two of them becoming future kings of Palenque, Khan Ba'alam and Khan Hoi Chitam II. Many archaeologists theorize that Pakal's wife, Lady Tsakbu, may have been the mysterious Red Queen of the Maya, whose tomb was only discovered in 1994. For more information about the Red Queen, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 117. Of all the marks Pakal made in the ancient Maya world, he is perhaps best known for his elaborate tomb, touched upon earlier. The tomb is in the Temple of the Inscriptions, which the ancient people of Palenque called Ba'olam Yesh Te Nah, which translates into English as the House of the Nine Sharpened Spears. As the modern name would suggest, the temple gets its name from three hieroglyphic tablets known as the East Tablet, the Central Tablet, and the West Tablet, affixed to the temple's inner walls, which have a total of 617 glyphs carved onto them. This building is a pyramidal structure with seven panels and a rectangular building on top. The tomb is located inside the temple, and to prevent the weight of the pyramid from collapsing in on Pakal's final resting place, ancient architects designed a hut-shaped interior chamber reinforced with cross vaults and recessed buttresses. The lid of Pakal's coffin is familiar to many, and the scene it depicts is often referred to as the Palenque Astronaut. It shows King Pakal at the moment of his death and his transition to the underworld, Shibalba. The overpowering element of this work of art is the world tree found throughout Mesoamerica and the rest of the Maya world. It's in the shape of a cross and symbolizes the bridge between the underworld, the heavens, and the earth. The tree's roots plunge into the land of the dead, giving the appearance of flames from a rocket exhaust. A double-headed vision serpent appears on the sides of the cross, which is also common in other works of art. On the top of the tree is a celestial bird, which represents the heavens. The king is seated, that is clear, but to the archaeologists it is not in the seat of an Apollo moon capsule. He is seated on the sun. To the ancient Maya the sun made its journey across the sky, taking the dead with it to the underworld. So, to mainstream archaeologists, Pakal is riding the sun to his new resting place. The tomb contained many elaborate artifacts, including a jade mask, along with assorted jade jewelry, stone and clay objects, and many other funerary offerings long since decomposed. The complete story of Pakal the Great has not yet been written. Since Palenque is only 10% excavated and many of the ancient inscriptions have not yet been translated, there may be many interesting discoveries yet to be made about this fascinating leader 
of the ancient Maya. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the books, Mexico Unexplained and Mexican Monsters, to get hard copies of the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Till next time, thank Thank you, eh? Gracias. Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at MexicoUnexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.